And welcome, everyone, to another edition of Orlando Magic Pod Squad. Dante Marcatelli, George Galante, and Magic rookie Franz Wagner, kind enough to join us. Franz, I don't know if we can, I mean, can we say rookie anymore? These last three months seem like three different seasons. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how it feels to you. Does it? What have the last three months like been like to you? Nah, yeah. I mean, obviously <laughs> for me, uh, first time doing this. So uh, I don't know what we're 43 games or something like that. So um no it definitely feels like a like a really really long time and um everything kind of blends in together though I would say um but no it's been definitely a lot of adjustments and a lot of fun um you know getting used to it um but yeah it's just halfway through so <laughs> that's the crazy part we're halfway through I, so let magic fans know right at the time of this recording you're in charlotte you have kind of an off day right a maintenance day today what, what do you do when you have spare time on the road what do you what do you do to fill that? Um, I mean, try to get all my recovery in. We watched film earlier. Um, just got my recovery in and probably do some more later. And then um, maybe watch a little bit of film. But um, sometimes I just like to not worry about basketball at all on, yeah. on off days like these. Um, maybe read my book, watch watch my show. Um, yeah, just simple stuff like that. I mean, obviously, I got my brother in the team, so where we're probably going to go to dinner later or something like that. But, um, yeah, just what's your, what's your book and what's your book and what's your show? The same thing. What are your books and shows? You, you, now you let the cat out of the bag. I know. Um, so I just finished the book, uh, called the power of, uh, of now. Um, I can, I can highly recommend that. And then my show, I watch entourage. I just rerun that. Um, whenever I feel like it, um, but yeah, um, those are those are things that I'm I'm doing. Yeah, the two good ones, George. Entourage are is a great ones. show. I can't speak for the book, great. you know, because I don't read Dante. We we we've already we already <laughs> know that I don't read. Yeah, that's but good. so but you texted me yesterday, Franz, when we were setting this up and said you're not allowed to go to the gym because some guys went to the gym and you said you're not allowed to go to the gym. Now, would you have gone to the gym today if if somebody wasn't <laughs> wasn't keeping um, your neck? Because I mean, you know you got to keep keep your health going. No, for sure. I mean, I definitely would have went and probably got um, some weightlifting and something. It's not too hard on the body, but still kind of keeps me in rhythm. Um, but yeah, that's that's been one of the adjustments for me to kind of know when to when to work hard and and do all that. But also um, knowing that, like we just said, it's a really long season and we're just halfway through it. And um, you know, all those hours, especially on the court, they they add up pretty quickly. So. Um, that's been one of the things that um, when, I'm, when I'm leaning on the coaches and, and the rest of the guys around me to kind of figure out what um, what my schedule is and within the season and uh, yeah, what my body can kind of um, do. So I got, I got an email the other day from uh, my counterpart in Houston who, who was working on something for Jalen Green. And he, he sent me the double digit scoring streak in team history, which I had already had that you had the second longest 10, 10 or more point streak in history. And he said, man, he goes, I knew Franz was doing well. I just didn't realize he was this consistent. And so we had a little back and forth and I said, well, yeah, like you can pop open the box score every night and you're going to find 14 to 18 to 20 points, five to seven rebounds, four to five assists. Like how, how are you maintaining this consistency? I think that's one of the things that everybody is really taking notice in your game um i mean i would uh sometimes disagree with you i think sometimes there's a couple up and downs and then maybe it doesn't show up in the volume box score maybe but when i'm going through these games i think um there's like little stuff that maybe um how to set up the screen or how to go over a screen on defense like little stuff like that where i can i can feel um Every game, every every two days, there's a game that there's sometimes that lack of focus that, that I realize that it's really hard to like stay locked in for uh, all those minutes. Um, but I just try to do my best um, out there on the court. Um, I get a lot of opportunities from from the coaching staff to kind of play free. I think we all do. And um, yeah, for me, it's just trying to take advantage of that. I, I try to watch film, learn from each game, and, and get better from each game. Um, but yeah, it's it's up and down throughout the season, maybe. The box score doesn't show that all the time, but, um, you know, there's always uh, learning involved, obviously. No, and you'll continue to develop and grow, but it's amazing how far you've come already. Leading scorer amongst rookies and that streak that George mentioned, 21 straight games. You have a 38-point game, to your credit. That's one of the highest for a Magic rookie. 
uh, in franchise history. Is there anything that you've done to this point that surprised you? Have you been surprised by anything that, that you've done so far this year? Um, I mean, coming into the season, I definitely wouldn't say that I like expected to be able to play all these minutes. And like you guys said, like play at a pretty um, solid, consistent level. Um, but I think like with, like within those first couple of weeks of the season, like there was like this, I, I kind of realized how I can play and I can play at, at a certain level every single night. Um, but yeah, I think just that, that focus that I mentioned earlier that I think I bring a, um, you know, a certain level of focus and intensity every single game. I think that's um, something that I've been uh, happy that I can bring that to the table. I think that's some, one of the hardest things to do um, with playing so many games that um, you're locked in on that on every single game and um, try to help the team win every single time. You know, Georgia was interesting. We had uh, we had Juwan Howard at a game, your former coach, right, at Michigan, and we had him on the air. And the first thing out of his mouth was, I wish I still had Franz. And he looked – very sad. <laughs> like, like he really, like he really meant it. He, he really, really, really misses still, Franz. He really misses you. And then you went and put 30 up, 38 in front of him, right? For him to watch and remind him even more, which was great. How special was that night for you to do that and have him there? And I, I know Juwan is a guy that means so much to you. Yeah, of course. I mean, um, Juwan, the, the whole Michigan program, uh, the team was there at the game. Um, I got to see them the day early. I went to their practice and just talking to them and, and seeing how they're doing. Um, it was weird for me watching their practice and seeing these these guys that are just like two years younger than me, but it's such a different vibe for, for me, like being at the practice, not being a Michigan player. Uh, but no, I mean, the whole program means a lot. Obviously, Juwan, um, you know, having recruited me and then playing for him for two years, um, I always say like the habits, the values that I learned there, I think, um, I think they'll help me grow up. Uh, you know, for the for the rest of my career and uh, even after that. So I think that's the coolest thing about Michigan and and about Juwan that you learn something for for the rest of your life. I mean, did any other program really have a shot at you, Franz? Because Mo went to <laughs> Michigan. I mean, let's be honest. You were going to Michigan right. the whole time, right? If you weren't staying in Germany, you were going to Michigan. Right, right. right? That was, yeah. yeah, that was really the only other option. Like I was really going back and forth the whole year where I was deciding um, I was either staying home or, or going to Michigan. And then um, what was the whole thing that year? Uh, Coach Bilan, he he had really recruited me and we had talked, um, but he had left that summer. So um, it was really up in the air. And obviously the coaching coach, whoever was going to be a coach, um, that was a big part for me. But um, Juwan being so long in the NBA and uh, the type of guy that, it, that he is, and um, it was really, really easy for me, I think, after that, making the decision. And uh, obviously, it worked out really well. You know, it's interesting that the first time you've ever played organized basketball with your brother, Mo, was in the NBA. That's amazing. I don't think anybody, any other brother tandem can say that. So I want to talk about the way you guys play and playing together and being with him. But first, you guys live together. And I think you need to shed some light on the living situation. <laughs> you and Mo, what, what is, give us some insight into the living situation with you two brothers. I mean, uh, we have a real nice house. Um, it's financially, obviously, being able to split everything. You can, uh, you know, we, we got a little bigger place than we probably get by ourselves. And, um, I mean, obviously, we have a nice little backyard. You can enjoy the nature in, in Florida, as you guys know, a little bit more than in Michigan, maybe. So um, we're really enjoying the weather. And, um, I mean, he he has his uh, room downstairs. He has the, he has the main uh he has the main room. I'll say that, but I got the whole. Why does he get the main room? Because he's older, or do you well, lose like a battle of rock paper scissors for it? Like, how does uh, this? How does well, that get decided? Thing, he has this humongous bed, and it won't fit in any other room, um, <laughs> except for the room. except for the main room. So, um, I mean, it's all good. I I have the whole upstairs area, so kind of two rooms for myself, and um, that way it's really cool. I mean, it's cool to like be together. And obviously, we spend a lot of time together, but also having your own space, I think is, is really important. And um, that's how we kind of go about, about our day. Um, every time after practice, we kind of take our nap and kind of chill for a little bit by ourselves. And then um, obviously eat together and um, watch some games or uh, some movies at night. 
Now, when was the last time you guys great. lived together, though, too? Because yeah. Mo's been a pro now for a few years, went to Michigan, yeah. and you were still like, when was the last time you guys lived together, let alone played in the NBA? So, really lived together. So, I was at his place in D.C. when okay. uh, COVID first hit. So, so we spent like three months together, I'd say, okay. uh, during that time. So, that was pretty cool. But um, other than that, I mean, before he left for Michigan, I think that was – so you were what? Time. You were what? Like 13, 14 years old? I was like old? 13, 14. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. It was, it was really long ago. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was, that was probably the last time. Yeah. Back home. In so Germany. George is, George is kind of a slob. I'm pretty clean. Like who's the, who's the clean one? Who's the messy one? Is that place a mess? Why am I the slob, by the way? In this is, it pretty, is it pretty nice? What's the, it's, what's it? What's it I, I would say it's nice. I think, um, I think I could do a way better job. Um, I'm like always the guy that kind of, I have all my stuff like kind of laying downstairs, like socks laying everywhere, my hoodies. Um, I'm kind of that guy, just a little bit lazy. Um, but I mean, we're, we're, we're pretty chill with that kind of stuff. I mean, we're, we're not any clean freaks or anything like that. I and mean, we're not messy at that like that. So um, we're, it's pretty chill at home. You can't leave the socks yeah. laying around front. Yeah. The, the hoodies yeah, and exactly. stuff, that's fine. The socks, that may be a line you're you're no, crossing I know. here. I think I think he's getting more upset than he uh than he would <laughs> let me know. So maybe I gotta work on that. They're on the table, they're on the couch. <laughs> right. Now so now how about obviously you, you might have exactly the same season you had this year, whether you were playing with Mo or not. But how much has he helped you? The fact that you got your brother going to the same practice schedule, same game schedule. You guys are literally going through every scenario together. How much of an impact has he had with how you've played? Oh, huge impact. I think um, just mentally, I think it's really easy with this schedule to like be in such a rush all the time and kind of, you know, not be in the moment and not enjoy the moment. I think um, he's helped me a lot with that. Just having someone, um, you know, that can relate and that you can talk to and, also talk about other stuff, not always uh, basketball. And um, I think that's really um, what has helped me play, you know, at a consistent um, kind of level that um, coming into each game, I'm always excited to play again. I think, um, you know, playing so much, I think it's really easy to, you know, sometimes dread playing again and dread playing basketball. Sure. I, think, uh, I think that's been uh, really important for me. When, when you go home, do you guys talk about the game at all? Or do you, when, when you leave the arena, do you shut it, shut it off? I mean, we'll occasionally like talk in the car or even at dinner and stuff like that. But um, yeah, most of the times I think we both feel that it's, it can be a lot right. uh, at once. And so um, we kind of find a good balance, I think. We had your mom, Beate, on the broadcast uh, a couple of weeks ago. She did a great job. She did a great job. And she said that she tries to stay up and watch you guys as much as possible, but it's late, you know, the first thing in the morning over there. But she gave a sense that a lot of people do in your town. Can you kind of give us a feel for the following that you have back in your town? I know that NBA Germany on Twitter, everything you guys do is everywhere. I think it's great. How about your following back home? Front? No, I mean, it's, it's a huge part. I think, um, I think it's the first time for, for Germany and basketball Germany that two brothers are playing on the same team. So um, I think that's really cool. And um, obviously they're, they're a huge part of obviously how we grew up and uh, us learning the game and uh, making it to this point. So um, I think I'm really happy to have this following. And I think uh, part of our motivation is to, to, to keep growing the game of basketball in Germany. I think obviously over here it's, one of the main attractions, but um, I think there's still a lot more potential uh, back home and in Europe. And um, I think that's why it's cool for us to see that so many people are watching already. Now, I think when we, when we had you on, when you got drafted, the day you got drafted, uh, day after you got drafted, you had said you had not met Dirk yet. Yeah, I, I, I still have. And you still have it. That, that hasn't happened yet? That has not happened yet. Now, who do we have to get on? We have to get on Coach Mosley to, to, to hurry this along, or maybe maybe um, hopefully he'll be in might, Dallas when we go tomorrow? <laughs> maybe. I mean, I, I know the guy's busy. Uh, I mean, obviously, we're busy, too. I, I'd obviously love to meet him. Uh, I know Mo met him a couple of times. Obviously, Mo uh, Mose has a special relationship with him. And I thought it was really cool the other day when uh, when Dirk's jersey got retired and you saw Mose in the video um, that they played. I um, thought it was really cool to see. And, um, you know, every once in a while, Mose will bring him up 
um, just you know in the, in the team speech or something like that um, obviously because he's a he's been a big part of of his career too and he's trying to tug on you a little bit to get you going maybe maybe, <laughs> maybe yeah <laughs> he's trying to push, <laughs> yeah, push a, some buttons <laughs> yeah no, that certainly certainly doesn't hurt either. when you watch that right 21 years with the Dallas Mavericks won a championship one team his entire career obviously a legend in Germany a legend here uh, does any part of you think, man, that would be kind of cool? I, I'd like to play for one team my entire career, win a championship here. Do you have those similar thoughts? Oh, of course. I mean, those are obviously like the dreams, and that's why it's so legendary, so so hard to do. Um, be with one team for such a long time, and um, obviously win the championship when nobody really expected it to. So um, obviously, those are the dreams. But um, I think that's like that's like what everybody hopes for, and I think. Um, Sometimes it's good to to just let that be let the, yeah. let that be Dirk's uh, legacy, and um, obviously it's all to do. But um, not just compare everything that I think um, that can be good for you. Those are that's a top ten player. So um, yeah, I'll obviously it's cool for me to see and growing up watching him, and um, yeah, it's a it's a big role model. I think a career like that um, is definitely something that everybody dreams of. Has there been a moment, Franz, where this year you've thought, all right, I'm on the floor, maybe it's with LeBron James or Kevin Durant, or where I thought, oh, my God, I'm here. I'm in the NBA. A kid grew up in Germany. I worked my tail off to get here, and I'm in the end. Have you had any of those moments, kind of surreal moments on the floor yet as a rookie? So, like, obviously I think about it, like, kind of before the game. Like, I think before we played KD or, or LeBron, like you said, and then um, I remember in the Lakers game, I had like a, a terrible stretch, like had like three turnovers in a row, a couple missed uh, missed shots and, and they had a huge run and I was really frustrated. And um, there was like a little stoppage in the game and I walked by our bench and uh, Mo, he was like, Franz, like smile, like look where you at. Like you're in stable center, you're playing against LeBron. Like um, sometimes you forget how, how special things are and, and moments are really. And uh, I think that really helped me in the moment kind of just, even if you're playing terrible, like enjoy, um, you know, because these moments are, are really special. That's a great point. That's a great point. I probably, Dante, you should probably do that when you're on the air, by the way. <laughs> take, a, take a minute and realize where you're at. <laughs> Franz, has anybody discussed the wall to you at all? Has anybody said, like, listen, you're going to feel something at game, and I don't know when that is, and sometimes rookies never hit it. They, they, they bust right through the wall, and, you know, but you've already said a couple of times, like, You've already played 40 some odd games, which is probably right. The most you've played in a single season and we're halfway through. So has anybody talked to you about what to do about getting to 82 and, and what you need to do to, to, to reach the finish line? I mean, yeah, I think that's been since I started really the season, um, the, the training staff and also coaching staff have been, have been stressing a lot that, uh, I mean, this season is going to be um, more toll on my body that that I've had before so um, just making sure I eat right and on days like this like sometimes take it slow and, and just do my recovery and um, that's that's definitely one of the adjustments and one thing uh, that I'm you know still learning and uh, like I said finding that balance when it's time to, to really work hard and lock in and when it's time to kind of um, yeah just chill for a little bit um, but yeah I think like I said I think um, even mentally I think I'm I can feel how like playing 40 games and playing so many minutes um, can take a toll and um, how that can kind of affect how you play already. And I think I felt that in a couple games already, um, but, you know, just keep moving on and keep trying to improve for every game. I think um, that's all I can really do. So that's, that's what I'm trying to do. Now, listen, that's the reverse jinx guys. That's not, that's you're exactly not going right. to feel the wall. I just brought it out that's there. Right. So that That's way, good. it just it's off the table at this point. <laughs> you're like, good, we you're good. Worry, right? We don't have to worry. Rip about right it. through it. That's How about right. another wall? Have you heard David Steele speaking of wall? Have you heard David Steele when you block a big shot? Have you heard him say the? Oh, Berlin I did hear that. I did hear that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, what do you think of that? <laughs> I, I mean, that's a pretty good nickname. Um, I gotta block some more and, and block some more shots to, to really <laughs> for that nickname to, uh, you know, be be valid, I guess. But uh, no, I love that. How about the German hammer? You threw down some nasty dunks, and they brought the he brought the German hammer out, which I thought was great too. Do you like that one? That's a good one too. Yeah, um, same thing here. I, I still need a couple <laughs> more dunks, but um, no, yeah, that's those are two great nicknames for sure.
Did you I have like any nicknames come out? growing no, up? I like when it doesn't come out very often, and then you just yeah. then you drop the German hammer. Nobody, you know, then right. it, it's really it's a that, pounding. That's fair, but for it to like, I don't know, for me to earn it, I guess I think um, I need to I need a little, need a little bit more. But um, no, you're right. Okay. Did you have anything else? Any nicknames? Did they did they call you anything growing up? Did you have any nicknames as a kid? Um, growing up, I'm not sure. I mean, once I once I got to Michigan, they called me Boogie um which um which some of my teammates some of my coaches now do too um and it's your twitter handle so where where does that come from though franz like where does yeah. the boogie come from i i don't know <laughs> <laughs> no, they, just, they just started telling me that and i don't know i i, I like it a little bit um yeah. it just kind of stuck and um so i went with it when i, when I started the twitter that seems twitter. fair okay that seems Nothing fair. wrong with that Hey, I got to ask you this. It, it could be very easy for a team, you know, at the time of this, you're seven and 35, right? You guys have been in games. You're right there. It feels like a, a, a corner is being turned, but it can be very easy to get frustrated and let go of the rope and say, well, what are we doing here? Why are we going through all this? You guys don't, you guys battle your tails off every night. What, what, what do you attribute that to? How difficult is it at times? And what, what do you attribute the fact that you guys are always engaged? No, yeah, I think, I mean, obviously it's a, it's a mixture of, you know, great coaching and uh, the coach is really telling us that even if the results right now maybe aren't the ones that we want, um, that, you know, continues like continuously working hard and showing effort and uh, being in games for so long, I think um, will really help us in, in the long run. And eventually, like you said, we'll turn that corner and, and win those games. And um, I think at the same time, we have a lot of, uh, great characters on the team that, that hate losing and we're definitely frustrated after we lose all those games um, but once that next game starts I think we're we we all believe that we can win and uh, you know try our best I think um, that's got to continue to be kind of our identity and um, like I said I think they'll uh, help us in the long run well Franz I, one more question and then we got some great fan questions for you but uh, we, we understand Markel has been practicing. The entire team is together on this trip. Uh, Markel and Jonathan Isaacs return. It, it's one of the greatest mysteries known to mankind, but we feel like it's coming. We feel like it's soon. You've been on the floor with those guys. Tell us about how they look and how excited you are to be on the floor. What, what do you think you guys will be able to accomplish together? I think we have a lot of, a lot of special, like I said, characters, but a lot of talent. And, um, I mean, I'm really excited to, to, be able to put all those things together and finally play with those guys in the game. Um, but you can already tell, like, on this trip, that the energy is a lot different with them being in, in film sessions and on the team bus and, and on the plane and stuff like that. So um, I think that's one thing. I think uh, our team chemistry has been great, even, you know, like we yeah. said, through adversity and, and through losing a couple games. Um, I think that's been one of the best things about our team, that we still love to fight for each other and, and believe in each other, I think. Um, yeah, I think that's special. Well, one of the bright things that has happened, Franz, before we get to the fan questions, was you being named Rookie of the Month uh, yes. for December. What did that mean to you? And can we get like three more before the year's over? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no big deal. No, Just I mean, do December, January, right. February, right into March. No big deal. That'd be great. No, I mean, it's, it's really cool. Um, like I said in a couple other interviews, too, to you, you work so hard and uh, for the work to be recognized, there's uh, I mean, obviously, so much stuff that, that people don't really see. I think behind the scenes, and so many people that are involved. So, um, but at the same time, it was just one month. So, um, I want to, you know, keep getting better and keep improving. And, um, you know, all those other things, uh, like those awards, all, all that stuff will, will come. And if it doesn't, that's, that's not the end of the world either. So, um, yeah. I hope uh, we, we can keep getting better and I uh, hope we can win some games too. Well, we started pushing on the telecast to get Rookie of the Month. Jeff Turner started that and we all followed suit. Now, now we want to get greedy. Now we want Rookie of the Year. And I think, George, <laughs> that's where you come in, right? George, the great PR guy. We, we try, we, to, try to help get the word out. We had a very brief conversation after he, he won Rookie of the Month. Okay. And we, we, have a, we have a, right, Franz, we have a plan. We did, yeah. We just got I just told him he's got to bump his average up to like twenty-two a day a game, <laughs> right? Throw what in a would couple that, triple that a, doubles, is, no big deal. Is that a goal, Franz? Would would, would that mean would, would that mean a great deal to you if you were able to be recognized that way? Um, I mean, like I said, I think um, for me, even if it doesn't happen, even if it does happen, like 
um, I'm not going to judge my season based off of that because that's of stuff that I can't necessarily um, control. Um, I think my just worrying about the day-to-day -day business, watching my film, getting my recovery, and I think um, learning from each game to the next one, I think those are things that, that are going to be a lot more important and that are going to give me a chance to do that. But like I said, I'm not going to judge uh, my season or our season uh, on any of that stuff because um, – yeah, that's kind of out of my control. So, um, Dante, do you like these answers? These well are the said. answers of that a pro. Is well, this is like a, a well-seasoned well professional. He's not trapped yes. by your, your tomfoolery. No, I'm not <laughs> trying to trap him. I'm trying to hear. I think he's. I think it's great that he gets that out there. Now the pressure's on you, George. You got to go to work. Now you got to make fine. this happen. So we're, we're, all counting we're, on we're getting to work. Yeah, we're all counting on me. All right. <laughs> awesome. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, listen, we got some great questions from some fans here. Number, so th the first question was favorite TV show. So is Entourage your favorite show, or do you have others you'd put in there? I'll, I'll put Friends in there. Um, mm -hmm. Friends, Entourage. The first, the first season of Prison Break, to me, is one of the best seasons ever uh, ever made. But after that, it kind of kind of wears off. That's why I'm going to stick with Entourage and, and Friends. That's just... Um, yeah, very consistent, as we like to say. Do you get sucked yeah. in when Friends is on, like, for eight hours during the yeah. day, like a day like today when you can turn on, like, TBS and Friends is on from, like, 12 to 6? Sometimes I do, and the bad thing about it is my YouTube feed, like, obviously they remember what you watched, and so now it's all, like, you know, <laughs> old Friends, like, jokes and top 10 moments and stuff like that, so. Nice, nice. Uh, are you a Joey Joey guy, Ross Chandler? Who's your guy? Honestly, I'm a big Ross, uh, Ross fan. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. No, he's, he's right. All right. Well, how about uh, who has been the toughest player for you to guard so far? Oh, that's easy. Uh, Kevin Durant. I think he went 11 for 12 <laughs> uh, for 30 points. So uh, I got to say, Kevin Durant. that's probably, probably the right. He does answer. that. Yes. He's done that to a lot of people. He's yes. done that to a lot of people. No question. All right. I, I'm going to, this one says, how does it feel to play on the same team as your brother? We've covered that. I want to okay. change it. Why does he get under so many people's skin? I love that about him. And he gets, there's a lot of guys that they get a little bit chippy when Mo gets out there. That's very it. true. Um, I mean, I think part of it is that like it happened in the past and now it's like, obviously part of it is his fault too, but um, <laughs> that like people expect it and, and are going at him and um, gotcha. he's not going to back down from anybody. So um, I think the energy that it brings to the floor, um, that kind of just provokes people a little bit. Um, but you know, a lot of times it, it takes people out of, out of their comfort zone yes. and out of what they want to do. So, um, obviously there's, there's a good balance with that too, but, um, no, I think, I think the energy that he, that he kind of brings to the game, I think that kind of brings out, uh, some stuff in people. I agree. I love it, George. I can't get it. I know you do. I know. I hear about it all during the game. What, what's your favorite video game, Franz? Favorite video game to play? I'm going to go with FIFA. Just uh, going back in my uh, PlayStation career, I guess. That's been, <laughs> a, that's been a game I've been playing. Um, I just I just downloaded the new Spider-Man um, one. So that's my first Spider-Man uh, video game. So I'm going to try that. Probably. Do you leave the console at home? Or I know some guys take it on the road. Do you take yours on the road? No, I, I left it at home. Okay. Um, I'm not good enough to, to do it that much. <laughs> yeah, maybe if I was better. Now, this one's pretty specific. It, it all, Not only does it want to know your favorite color, but your favorite color and why is it your, <laughs> <laughs> it's your, it's oh, your wow. favorite color. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with, like, just pretty generic, just blue. Um, okay. I don't know why, but any any team that I've played on, I think they always had uh, blue in their jersey. Uh, color or uniform and, and stuff like that. So uh, I don't know if it's that's why, but um, yeah, blue. I'd say. Okay. Okay. Very you want good. this to be the last one, Dante? Yep. Yep. Last All right, one. How about how about your favorite part of Orlando? Favorite part of being in Orlando? Thing you like the most? I think my favorite part is the weather, and just coming from like a road trip in Milwaukee or something like that, and stepping onto the plane. Um, it's pretty awesome. So. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say with the weather. Do you still have to carry around the speaker and set up the music yep, yep. on the lock? Where's it at? Yep. You have it. You have it. Still part Not of the right dude. Here. Look at that. Good for you, <laughs> sir. So you still you still bring that? Do you pick the music? Does someone else play the music? How does that work? No, I let I let that 
and that that's the other people, other guys' job. Um, yeah, no. The other day, Terrence uh, played something. I sure don't know. It's really uh, whoever wants to play that day. So, yeah. Will you ever get to, a chance to pick the music, or is that wait till next year? Uh, yeah, I might have to wait till next year. But honestly, I don't. Some of us don't like the pressure of like, oh, what's the next song, and what are what are people gonna like? So <laughs> yes. Um. So you know, I'm I'm gonna let that be be the other people's job. Why is Franz, there was something there was something ripping around on Twitter today. JJ Reddick was asking if it's okay on a plane during a plane to take your shoes off. If it's ever okay to take your shoes off, then there's a picture of your team plane with someone not only with their shoes off. Uh, that was feet. that was that was Jalen Suggs, by the way. Jalen Suggs yeah, Suggs on the table, on the table, which I think is completely inappropriate. Where do you come down? <laughs> where do you, where do you weigh in on that? So shoes I definitely plane. take my shoes off on the plane. I think okay. it's a different relaxation experience sure. uh, than if I have them on. Um, I don't know if so you, you don't. Have to have so you don't care on. about your teammates, is what you're saying. You don't care about. <laughs> I mean, I, I wouldn't say that my feet necessarily are that bad. In okay. Terms of okay. Calling, but um, I don't know if you have to have them on the table. But you know, I get it <laughs> after. I think I think we all agree on the on the team play that comfort trumps trumps everything else a little bit. Um, even if that maybe not the you know best thing for for hygiene and that kind of stuff, but um, I think yeah, I think it's not the worst thing I've seen. So um, comfort yeah. trumps everything. I love it. Yeah. Well, Franz, this has been great. Uh, thanks. So keep up the great work. I know you feel the love from the city. People have embraced you, and even though we know the wins will come and we we know the accolades will come, but it's been great getting to see you develop to this point. I appreciate you. Thank you.